All right, here we go. Let's take a let's take a look at some more factoring here. So, this is going to be huge. This factoring we're going to use for uh, quite some time here in your math career. So let's do a quick review before we get into what we're doing. Our goal here is to factor second degree trinomials. So a lot of vocab here. Real quick, if you think back, we talked about polynomials uh, earlier in this year, and we had a couple. These are different types. We have a monomial, and that is just one term. And if you think of like a bicycle, we've got two terms here. So that's a polynomial with two terms. And then of course, try is three. So we're looking at something with three terms. And to be a term, it just means you're a number or a letter or both number and or a variable. So sometimes we've got one of these. So last time we were kind of looking at like a monomial. We were doing something like this, like six times two X plus one, a monomial times a binomial. And then we were, or we were factoring binomials is what we were doing. This is a lot of mumbo jumbo here. The main things I want you to do is we're gonna take something like this and we're gonna factor it now. We're gonna up the ante here. So what is it really? It's a second degree trinomial. That means the power is two. The highest power is two. So the highest power of the polynomial is two and it has three terms. So it's gonna look like this. There's the highest power of two and it has three terms in it. Turns out this comes up a lot in math and let's take a look at why. So, for vocab aside, this is what we're doing right here. I'm gonna give, we used to give you something like this, and say, hey, go ahead and multiply that out for me. And what happens here? Well, it's that double distribute idea where you do x times x is x squared, x times four is this four x, three times x is another three x, and then three times four is 12. So we have to double distribute that. Then, it turned out the middle terms were always the same. So we add them together, four x and three x, gives us that seven x we ended up with this. Well, look at this. This is that second degree trinomial. So now what I want to do is I'm going to give you that trinomial. I want you to go back to these two binomials. I want you to unfactor this. So remember, multi or I'm sorry, factor just means to unmultiply. We are going to unmultiply this bad boy. So I am looking for what two parentheses like this will give me that. So I'm going to unmultiply it. So really, we're going to do this backwards. We're going to go back from this. Well, how is there some pointers here? Yeah, there's some definitely some pointers here. Basically, we're going to undouble distribute. Last section we were undistributing, now we're going to undouble distribute. So, what does that mean? Well, check this out. Where did the 12 come from? It came from the last times of uh, the two last numbers, the last part of the double distribute. So, I'm looking for something that multiplies to 15. So, what multiplies to 15? Well, 1 times 15 and three times five, that's it. Those are the only things that multiply to 15. So I, I'm good to go there. It's either one of these sets right here. Then what happened, where did this seven come from? Well, it's this four and this three. It's the four and the three. So I need two numbers that add up to my middle number of eight. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to the 15, add to the eight, just like this. Two numbers, three times four is 12, three plus four is seven. So what two numbers multiply to 15, add to eight? Well, here they are right here, they're three and five. So I just unmultiplied that. It's going to be x plus 3, x plus 5. Isn't that crazy? Does it work? Let's check it real quick. Let's do a double distribute. So what is x times x? There's my x squared. x times 5 is 5x. Five 3 times x, 3x. Three, 3 times 5, 15. And there it is, x squared plus 8x plus 15. So it definitely works. So I was able to take this thing and factor it into two binomials like that. That's the whole section. That is it right there. Let's uh, let's make it a little more difficult here. This one has some positive and negative signs, but the general rule here is what multiplies to this number adds or subtracts to this number. And I like this little trick. You don't have to do it. Uh, a lot of people like to do this. They like to say, okay, what multiplies to 21? Well, one times 21, one always works. Two doesn't go into it. Oh, three times seven does. That's actually it. I like to put it in this little X thing here to kind of keep me organized. So I'm looking for, hey, what multiplies to 21 adds or subtracts to negative 10? You do not have to do this. I just want to come up with the, the right uh, factors here. So what is going to do it? Well, what gives you what adds or subtracts to 10? It's this 3 and this 7. But we got to think about this. So what I normally do is I put the 3 here, the 7 here. These are my factors. Well, 3 times 7 is 21, but it's 3 plus 7, negative 10. It's not. So I got to be careful with the signs. In this case, they both have to be negative. Why? A negative 3 times a negative 7 is 21. A negative 3 plus negative 7 is negative 10. So in this case, it's x minus 3, x minus 7. There it is. That is factored. Can I real quick check it and see if it works? Sure. Let's multiply it out. x times x is x squared. x times negative 7 is negative 7x. Negative 3 x and then plus 21. 
So we put these bad boys together and check it out. There it is, it works. So what's nice about this, you're gonna know if you got it right. All you gotta do is multiply back out. You should get 100% on every quiz, every test. Just multiply it out. Did you do it right? Yes or no, good to go. Awesome, let's try the next one. So I like this little X here. I'm gonna say, hey, what multiplies to negative 18? So here, what multiplies this? And what adds or subtracts to negative three? So if you need help, some people like to write this down. Okay, what's gonna give me 18? Well, one times 18, two, always try two, two times nine, three times six, four doesn't go in there, five doesn't go in there, and then I'm back to six. So here are all the factors of 18. Of these, which one will add or subtract to three? So like one and 18, they can either be, one plus 18 is 19, and one minus 18 is 17. Not gonna work. Two and nine can be two plus nine is 11, two minus nine is seven. But check it out, how about this one? This one works here, three and six. And be very careful with your signs, it's really important here. So check it, three times six is not negative 18, so one of these has to be negative. Who has to be negative? It's really important, it's gotta be the six. Why? Three minus six is negative three. So the sign is hugely, hugely important. So this is gonna be what? X plus three, X minus six. There it is, just like that, we have factored it. A quick check, boom, double derivative this. Uh, double derivative, that's calculus, sorry. Double distribute, uh, X times X is X squared. X times six is six X. We got our three X and we got our minus 18. And you can see all that stuff we were just undoing with our little magic X over here in the corner, we are redoing it. So it shows why it works there. That is definitely a check, that works out. This is the factored form right here. We got it right, nice job. This may seem weird. Maybe you're weirded out a little bit. Just keep on doing. We're just going to practice these, and you're going to be a pro at these. So why is it so important? Well, now look at these equations we can solve. We can actually use factoring to solve these, and it's going to come up a lot. So we just got to get good at it now. Uh, you'll thank us later for all this practice. So I know this is going to break down. It's a it's this trinomial I want to break down. What's it going to break down to? So depending on how you are, I like the magic X. Boom, negative 24. What multiplies negative 4? What adds to 10? All right, so what multiplies to 24? Well, we got one times 24, two times 12, because it's even, two's gotta go in there, three times eight, four times six, five times five, no, and then we're back to six, so we're done checking. So these are things that multiply to 24. I need the one that gives me 10. This is crazy. Oh my goodness, great example. I'm glad this is in here. There are two possibilities, aren't there? Check it out. It could be this. Two and 12 can give me 10. Four and six could also give me 10. Definitely can't be three and eight. That's 11 or five. That's 25 or 23, so it's one of these. Well, it depends on the sign, so we have to be real careful on this. I'm gonna tell you, it's not four and six. <laughs> if you wanna try four and six, why doesn't four and six work? We'll try it. Four times six is a positive 24, so I need one of these to be negative to get that negative 24. Well, there's no way. If I put the negative here, that'll give me four minus six is negative two. If I put the negative over here, that's gonna give me negative four plus six is a positive two, so it's not that one, so you can try it not gonna work out for us, so let's go back. So it's gotta be the other combo here, so you're out. Let's try two and 12. One of these has to be negative. Who has to be the negative? It's gotta be the two in front, because negative two plus 12 is a positive 10, then a negative times a positive is a negative. So here are my, those are my factors. Throw them in the parentheses, it's gonna be x minus two, x plus 12. So I successfully factored that bad boy. Am I done? No, remember going back to the last section, that little zero product property thing? Basically, I've got two sections here multiplying. If one of these is zero, then the whole thing is zero. So I'm trying to solve. Anytime you see an equal sign, you want to solve it. So we've got x plus 12 equals zero. So add your two to both sides. We're gonna get x equals two. Subtract your 12, and we're gonna get x equals minus 12. So two answers here. You can even plug these in and make sure they work. Plug in two, it should work. Four plus, plus 20 is minus 24 is zero. So it does work out. These are my two answers here. Both of these work, solved it, killed it, awesome. Very nice, very nice. Let's just keep it going here, we're just flowing. How about this, so uh, I can't solve this as is because it doesn't equal zero. Remember the key is it has to equal zero or you can't use that zero product property, that's our trick here. So what do I do to make it equal zero? I'm gonna subtract 30 from both sides. Now the key to this, you can subtract things from either side, but I always like to have this lead, this x squared positive. For now, this is the goal, this must be positive. I could have moved x squared over here, but then he would have become negative, that's bad. So bring everybody over to the x squared. You want him positive to solve these bad boys. So that's how we know which side to go to. Now, uh, if you're getting good at these, some people don't even need this x, but I'm looking for, hey, what multiplies to negative 30, 
And then if there's no number there, what is it? It's a 1. So it multiplies to negative 30, adds or subtracts to 1. Maybe you can just do it in your head. Maybe you want to write them all down. I'll write them all down just so you can see them. 1 times 30, boom. 2 times 15, 3 times 10, 4 doesn't go in there, 5 goes in there 6 times, so I've got these. Those are all my factors of those. Which one are going to give me uh, 30 and 1? I'm sorry, multiply 30. What's it going to add or subtract 1? It's got to be the 5 and the 6. That's the only combination. This would give me 3 plus 10 is 13 or 7, 17 or 13, 31 or 29. So it's got to be 5 or 6. Again, with the negatives, this is the hardest part. Who's got to be negative here? Well, I, one of them is because right now a positive times a positive is a negative. Or I'm sorry, is a positive. So I need to make this guy here the negative because negative 5 plus 6 is a positive 1. Once you have the factors, you are golden. It's going to be x minus 5 x plus 6. So you may ask, does the order matter? No, I don't care if you put x plus 6, x minus 5. It doesn't matter. You're multiplying. Order is not important here. Um, as long as you have the right factors, you're good to go. Then let's just finish this out. So I want to solve it. So what makes this one 0? When does x minus 5 equal 0? When does x plus 6 equal 0? You've probably done so many of these after passing last section. You just know it's going to be x equals 5 and x equals negative 6. But if not, solve it. Show the steps. Uh, so my answers here are negative 5 and 6. And again, I'm taking a match check or a quiz or a test, just plug it back in. It's not that hard to plug 5 in. Is 5 squared plus 5, does that equal 30? Sure, 25 plus 5 is 30, so I know I'm right. Is negative 6, same thing, is negative 6 squared plus negative 6, does that equal 30? Sure, when you square that negative 6, you get 36 minus 6 is 30. So boom, take a second, get 100%, totes worth it. Uh, all right, so... I think we're getting pretty good at factoring, and you will get really good at this. You're going to have to. We're just going to practice until it all is easy uh, easy for you. Uh, there is a special case here, though. I want you to be uh, leery of the difference of squares, and it happens like this. If I want you to multiply this, let's real quick do our double distribute. Got my x squared. Got my x times my negative 3 is negative 3x. Check out this, and maybe you see what's going to happen here. And then we say 3 times that is negative 9. Well, those middle terms cancel. Negative 3x plus 3x are gone, and I end up with this special case. This is not a trinomial. This is a binomial. It only has two terms. Uh, can I factor it? Well, yeah, look what it came from. I can definitely factor it. This unmultiplies back to this. So if you want to think of it as a trinomial, you can actually think of it as this. You have no middle term. These are the same thing right here. Now, we're not going to write 0x. That's just weird. So if you can just recognize that, hey, if this number here is a perfect square, that's why it's called a square, like 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 3 is 9, 4 times 4 is 16. These are perfect squares. These are things when you take the number and times it by itself are perfect squares. And really, that's probably as far as you got to go. If you can recognize it when it's a subtraction sign, you got the, a variable squared minus a subtraction sign, and this, then you can just break it down. For example, if I want to factor this, I want to unmultiply it. Oh, I recognize, oh, because it's negative. And because I know the square root of that, 5 times 5 is 25, I can just say, hey, this is x plus 5. This is x minus 5. Awesome. And it works. The middle terms cancel. You're good to go. If you wanted to try our little trick about what multiplies to 25, you can. You're just saying what multiplies to 25. There's no middle term. and adds a 0. It's plus 5 and minus 5. Totally going to give you the same answer if you wanted your magic x. Totally cool with that. Uh, but I think the quicker you recognize these, the better because they're going to come up quite a bit. So of these right here, which are your difference of squares? How about this first one? Is it different squares? Well, it's a negative, so that's a must. Yes, that's the difference part, the negative. And is it a uh, perfect square? Sure. 64 is 8 times 8, so boom. This is x plus 8, x minus 8. And again, if you had to do your magic x, it would work. How about this one? No, it's not. This is not because of the plus sign. It's not a difference of squares because uh, it's not subtraction. So it doesn't work. So it only works with subtraction. How about this? Is this different squares? Not even close. I've got this extra x here. So this is old school. So this is not a difference of squares. And I don't know the square root of 12. You could factor an x out of this. That's old school, greatest common factor. They both have an x in common. So don't be, uh, don't, don't confuse those two. They kind of look similar. Definitely not. And the last one is this one. We've got the negative sign. That's cool. Is that a perfect square? It is. 1 times 1 is 1. So this actually works out to this. So this is not, I should put not here, this is not a perfect square, just so you know. Fantastic. That is it. And I think the best way to do these is to do them. That's profound right there. That is deep. The best way to do them is to do them. The best way to do this is to actually practice them. So what I want you to do is take these six. When it says factor, you're not solving. There's no equal sign. Don't put an equal sign in there. Just factor it. Unmultiply it. 
When I say solve or you see this equal sign, yes, I want to say x equals 2, x equals 5, whatever it is. Try all of these. I'm going to put them up with the work shown. See how you did. I mixed some old stuff in there just to keep it real. Good luck. All right, let's check this out. A lot of cool things happen here. First one was pretty uh, straightforward. Can you factor it? Boom, hopefully you got x minus 6, x plus 4. Double check it. It works. You're good to go. Check out this one. Um, when you're solving it, we had a negative times a negative is the positive, so both of these were negative. So when I go ahead and get the actual solution, I get 3 and 8. I threw a little difference of squares in here for number 3. Hopefully you recognize that. Versus number 4, not a difference of squares. you got to pull out the greatest common factor. So that goes back to the last section. Solve it. You should get 0 and negative 4. Number 5, you had to move it over to set it equal to 0, so move your 9 over. And then check this one out. This does have a name. This is the sum of squares. Uh, but what... I don't like you to worry about that. If maybe you recognize it before, maybe not, but it's x plus 3 times x plus 3. It's the same thing. So if you solve both of these, you get negative 3 and negative 3 as your solution. So that's just negative 3. So you may just have one solution. And then the last one, um, you had to move your x over. And again, when you did, you got this x squared minus 4x, and it's old school. It's not uh, one of these trinomials. You should get 0 and 4. So I'm going to mix in the old stuff, introduce some new stuff. That's the whole section. Take your time, practice these. If you're still struggling, do the corrective assignment. Uh, you'll get it. It'll be worth it. Good luck. Peace out.